Now we're going to explore the surface area of a right cone. And I've made this view for you a little bit unusual. Um, I've got a cross-sectional area right here. I want you to imagine this is the height of the cone. This is the slant height. This is the radius. So this triangle would be on the inside. If this triangle were revolved around H, it would generate a cone. The base of the cone would look like this. Of course, the circle with this same R, this same radius. So this is a little awkward view, um, and I think it can illustrate the point, though, because if I were to take this form and I were to roll out the figure, uh -huh, I've got the circumference here, and taking this surface that was wrapped around it, it I could imagine this turning into a triangle where this L, this which is the slant height, is now the height of this triangle. The base of this triangle is the circumference of our circle, as we can see there. Wow, a little tricky there, but um, let's work with me on this. If I look at the blue formula, um, area of the base plus one half circumference times slant height, and over here, I'm just going to substitute the red I find far more useful. Pi r squared, we know is the area of a circle. Now, when I take, if I substitute 2 pi r for circumference, the 2 is going to divide out with the 1 half. It's going to simplify to pi r l. Um, so again, we could think of the first term as being the base and the second term as the lateral area. So there you go. Let's do some exercises and see how this works out. Well, let's do two very quick exercises here, 14 and 15, surface areas of these two given cones. And um, first one, well, 14, pretty straightforward. The only detail left out, remember, if you're looking at this cone, you are given a diameter here and you need a radius. So if you were to draw into scale, this, the radius would be 13, the slant height is 20 centimeters. So we take our original equation, perform our substitution. Notice we do our arithmetic here. Um, 169 pi and 260 pi can be combined to 429 pi. We're going to leave this one in terms of pi. We'll get some decimal practice uh, to the right here. And remember, I throw my units on the end. Those are square centimeters. And over on the right here, number 15, I've got a radius of 5 and a height of 8. This time, what's missing is the slant height. So the slant height is clearly some radical value, radical 89. Um, I know you're all going to be eager to put that in a decimal, but hang on for a second. Let's just go through the equation. We've got this. We perform our substitution. And then I can, I'm going to factor out the pi here. So I know I've got 25 plus 5 radical 89 pi. Whew. And how did I get this? Well, maybe let's pull up the calculator and see if we can do that ourselves. So we'll pull up the calculator and we're going to say, hmm, 5 radical 89. I'm going to take 89. That's the square root of 89. And I'll multiply that times 5. Okay. And then to that, I'm going to add 25. So that's 25 plus 5 radical 89. And then I'll take that answer and I'll multiply times pi. And we're going to round to the nearest hundredths place. And you can see 226 and 73 hundredths. And then we put in the unit here and it's going to be square feet. Well done. Well, exercise 17 is a multiple choice problem. We get to work backwards. We're starting with the surface area of the cone, and let's make that substitution. We're we are given 200 pi, and you notice we also factored out the pi on the right-hand side of the expression. That's going to make it easy for us to divide both sides of the equation by pi. And not only did we divide here, but we've also substituted the radius of 8. Remember, we're given diameter of 16. We substituted radius of 8. And um, from here, pretty straightforward. I can square that 8, and then I can subtract it from both sides of the equation. So I've now got 8 times the slant height is 136, 
and I'm going to divide that out and I can restore the units and well I am taking square feet dividing by feet and I will have 17 feet so our choice is choice B and that's it well in exercise 19 we're going to take this um, we're going to draw a sketch of this cone meeting these criteria diameter 16 meters so that means a radius of 8 meters I have a cross section over here on the left the height of the entire figure is 30 meters so you see this this figure really dwarfs our model standing there on that circle so we're just going to do an extrude of this uh, triangle because this is a solid of revolution if we could just manage oops I almost had it there spin it around and now you can see what our cone would look like and we're going to find the surface area of this cone and let's get right to it so we know the surface area, pi r squared, which is the area of the circle, the circular base, plus pi r l, the slant height. Um, the slant height on this one, a little bit of arithmetic. I'm going to leave it in radical form. And, you know, when I do the Pythagorean theorem, I'm, I look at the 8 and the 30, and they're not relatively prime, so I factor the 2 out. I factor that out in front of the radical. Trust me, it's a lot more efficient. We talked about this in a previous chapter. So then I can just work with 4 and 15 much more manageable numbers. Um, if you didn't do that, you just had a bigger number in your radicand there. So um, let's, um, let's go to work with this, do some substitution. I know that I've got a radius of 8 and again 2 radical 241 for the um, um, for the slant height and when I simplify this yeah you know, that's as far as I go and I think oh, okay I, I, I think I'm I can't combine these two terms um, well not easily so I it's, we might as well break out the calculator right here and we're going we want this answer to the nearest hundredths place so let's give it a shot um, I make sure my memory is clear and I'm going to start at the beginning. I'll take 64 pi. That's 64 times pi. Um, make sure I record that. So that's about 200. That makes sense. N plus. I'm going to put that in the memory. Then clear here. I need to evaluate the second term. Radical 2. I'm going to start with the 241 radical 241 times 16. And then I'm going to multiply that times pi equals about 780 that sounds pretty good to me m plus I'm going to add that I remember I'm adding to about 200 so I add that and now I check my memory and I say aha 981 and 39 hundredths and now oops and now I'll put in my square meters after all that is our unit and we're done now this one will be a little bit of fun, uh, figure number 24, exercise 24 is a composite figure. It's actually two cones seated together. We're going to use part of our formula and um, let's first start by drawing this sketch. This sketch would be helpful. I'm splitting the figure into two pieces. I want to think of them both as solids of revolution revolving around this axis, uh, this axis here that it um, right there. Um, both of these triangles, if you will, these cross sections have a leg of three um, because after all the radius of that one circle internal has a radius of three yards. This one has a height of four. This triangle and the triangle I've denoted red has eight yards. Let's have a 3D picture of this. Um, it might look something like this and if I was better with the extrude tool and we might be able to wrap that around. Oh, oh, go oh, right there. Ah, and you can see that we would generate a cone on the top, a cone on the bottom, by revolving the um, these two figures around the vertical axis. So let's um, let's have a quick look back over here, and let's work out this equation. I know that the Again, the um, surface area of a cone is pi r squared plus pi r l, but the pi r squared part 
is the circle, the base, and that's hidden. So in this figure, all that's going to be visible is the lateral area of the blue and the lateral area of the red. I could call them one and two respectively, but I've got color. So let's, let's move this over here and let's go to work here. Again, just the pi RL. I'll call them one and two. Um, at this point, I would factor out the pi r. Since r is common for both, it's going to be three yards. And let's see, I guess I can make another substitution there. Oops, so I have something out there getting ahead of myself. I should have figured this. I, I knew that this one was five yards because I have a three, four, five Pythagorean triple. And down here, the radical 73, yeah, you guessed it. I uh, had to resort to the Pythagorean theorem. Um, it, I knew it was in simplified radical form because 8 and, th and 3 are relatively prime. So now I think it's, oh, heavens to Mergentroids, it's time to bust out the calculator. Where is that thing when you need it? Right over here. So, so I would take 73, take the square root, and I'm going to add to that 5. So now I've got 5 plus the square root of 73. I'm going to multiply that times my radius 3 and then times pi. And to the nearest hundredth, which is what my I'm being asked for here, 127 and 65 hundredths. And we are done. Don't forget to add your units. You know with surface area, it's going to be square yards. Finito.